Hello and welcome to If You Love This Planet. My guest today is Arnie Gunderson, an old friend, an energy advisor with Fairwinds Associates, a company who provide research, analysis and paralegal services around environmental and energy issues. Arnie is an independent nuclear engineer and safety expert. He provides testimony on nuclear operations, reliability, safety and radiation issues to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, congressional and state legislatures and government agencies and officials throughout the US, Canada and indeed internationally. He's been a leading voice globally about the impact of the Fukushima nuclear disaster and he joins us now once again. Welcome to the program, Arnie. Hi, Helen. Thanks. It's nice to be back again. <laughs> well, now, um, I needed to get you back because you've been saying some new things about Fukushima and I've got quite a lot of questions too. So I think, as usual, you need to give us a complete update of Units 1, 2, 3 and 4, where they stand, what your thinking is now and the like, please, Arnie. So the floor is yours. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, well, let's go 4, 3, 2, 1. That's um, for a change. Um, unit 4, the walls have been knocked down. Um, and uh, and that's a good thing. The plan is... What do you mean the walls have been knocked down? I don't know what you mean by that. Ah, well, the um, you know the explosion kind of devastated everything uh, for the last two floors of the nuclear reactor. So they've they've ripped out the remaining structures, and they um, uh, they're down at what we would call the operating floor. Well, you mean the building the building still stands, but they've taken out the two upper floors. Is that right? Yes. If the building was a hundred feet tall, now it's sixty feet tall. They've taken out all of the superstructure above the nuclear reactor, and, and, what and that was a high. That was a very high bay area where the the massive cranes moved and uh, where the refueling bridges moved. Uh, so all of that has been removed, and um, there's going to be shortly um, essentially a flat area where um, where Tokyo Electric plans to work. Well, wait a minute. No, so so they've taken out the two upper floors, which were damaged anyway, where the cranes were. So you're left with the reactor containment vessel, and next to which is the cooling pool full of over 100 tonnes of very radioactive fuel. Is that right? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Right. Now, the, the plan is <clears throat> that once they do this, they'll build a building on top of the the rubble that's still there, the the, the refueling uh, pool especially, they will use the um, uh, existing foundation to uh, on one side on the water side, uh, and then they'll build a new foundation on the land side to build a new bridge for this huge crane. Remember, there was a crane in there, but it collapsed, um, and uh, so they'll have to um, put a new crane in. The reason it's such a monumental job is they need a crane that can lift a heavy spent fuel cask, and that weighs something on the order of 130 tons. So it's a huge crane. What? What? What a so, spent? What a, is? Are you talking about a spent fuel bundle, or I don't understand what you mean? Uh, well, each bundle will have to get lifted and put into a shielded container underwater. Yeah. So as soon as those things come out of the water, uh, they're so highly radioactive they would they would kill the people on the operating floor. So all of this has to be done with the fuel pool full of water. So they'll lift out one bundle at a time, and of course the question is: Are the bundles distorted because of the heat, or have they been damaged because of all the rubble that fell into the pool? Uh, but in theory, anyway, they'll be able to go down and grab the bundle pull it out, still underwater, carry it to the side of the pool, and in underwater still there'll be a huge canister. They'll lift the fuel into that huge canister, put a lid on it. That huge canister weighs something like 100 tons. Oh. They'll lift that up, put uh -huh. that in the big crane, and lower that to the ground. And that will have to occur dozens of times and over over, you know, perhaps a year when they have to empty that fuel pool. Well then, okay, so wait a minute. 
each fuel bundle will be lifted up underwater and they'll, they'll have to bring... Uh, the canister is not yet in the pool, right? They'll have to make the canister and put it in the pool ready to receive each fuel bundle to be then transferred to the ground. Is that right? That's right. That's right. So goal number one on that site is to get that pool empty. And it will take, um, once the building is built, it will take a year or two. So it's, they're not out of the woods by any means because if there were a seismic event and the pool were to drain, they could still have a, a fuel pool fire and, and uh, you know, contaminate uh, the, the entire country. So it's, it's um, improving because they are in the process. But, you know, Helen, they, they finally figured this out this year. I was on Chris Martinson's show back in June of last year in 2011, and I was saying you've got to build a building over the building. Yeah. And um, so they're very slow. And unfortunately, Mother Nature has her own timetable. So um, I view this as a battle against the clock, and I hope that uh, you know there won't be any major earthquake to destroy the building again. Well, now, um, how long is it going to take to reinforce the building? You say they've got to build a new wall on the far side from the ocean, on the land side, to, yeah. re to make it strong enough to be able to put this incredibly heavy crane on top of the building. How long will it take, A, to build the building, per se, before they They claim it'll take a year. A year. They'll so you've got a don't. year to build the building. Then they've got to put the crane on top of the building. That probably won't take so long, right? Right. It's something on the order of 18 months from now they'll be able to move fuel. 18 months so before they move the fuel, and then it's going to take another year to totally remove the fuel from the pool. So we're That's talking right. about two and a half years. We're talking 2015 or 2016 before oh, that job's done. Yeah, yeah. So it's a and race. The last, fuel, yeah. the last fuel they move is the most radioactive, which is still the most dangerous. So removing the fuel at the beginning is actually the easy part. The, the last fuel is the newest fuel and it's physically hot and, of course, has the most radiation. So that fuel will be the last stuff they move in perhaps 2014 or 2015, right? So when they get it down to the ground in this container weighing 100 tonnes and, 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 and they move one fuel bundle at a time, how many, how many fuel rods in a fuel bundle, Arnie? Um, well, there's nine by nine, about 80. 80. In a, 90, yeah, 80 rods in a bundle, and, you know, there's like, um, over a 1,000 bundles. So how that, much that, does a bundle, those, how much does a bundle weigh? Around a ton. A ton? And, yes, around a ton. So a, now you have to remember the big problem is going to be have these things been distorted by the earthquake or yeah. by heat during yeah. the, the process or by rubble falling on them. They may not be able to pull them. Oh. They may get onto them and, and try to lift. And they'll be jammed, and then so, what? You know, that's a then that's what? another problem, right? Um, so we'll, we'll see as t as time develops. Unfortunately, they're they're taking way too long. So then they'll get them on the ground. They'll bring it over to the other fuel pool they've got there. They have oh. a huge pool. Then they'll empty it, and they'll do this process again and again and again. And gradually, they'll they'll um, once it's on the ground and in a canister, though. That's a lot better than having it up that high in the air in a damaged building. Well, now, so they're going to take it to the common fuel pool. The common fuel pool, how much spent fuel is presently in that common fuel pool, A, and B, where is it located? Um, it says about 7,000 bundles in the common fuel pool, and it's located on the water side of the nuclear reactors. It didn't flood after the tsunami. So it's a little bit uphill from uh, from uh, the plant on the on the land side uh, of the of the of the plant. So the um, so they'll so have to take seven. they'll have to take the oldest fuel out of that and put it into canisters on site for that that will stay there for you know decades. And then they'll take the stuff from Fukushima Daiichi Unit Four uh -huh. and put it into that because that that common pool. It's chocker block full. 
Well, if it's got 7,000 bundles now and each bundle weighs a tonne, there are 7,000 tonnes of spent fuel in that common fuel pool. Right. And then each, you know, reactor 2, reactor 1, reactor 3 all has, you know, five, 600 uh, bundles. So there's, you know, if you do the math, there's, there's uh, 50 or 60 uh, you know, uh, you know, 600 times a ton. There's 600 tons of material in each of those reactors. Yeah, there's a there's a huge amount of nuclear waste. There's 40 years of nuclear waste on that site. So um, yeah, they're gonna they have a lot. Plus, what's already in the dry cask storage, they have a dry cask facility on site too, and that survived the tsunami and the earthquake just fine. So the goal here is to get it all into dry casks over the next 10 years. Well, I've done the maths, and it seems like there's 8,800 tonnes of spent fuel at the site, or maybe rounded off to 10,000 tonnes of spent fuel at just that site at the Fukushima Daiichi reactor complex, and that hasn't included spent fuel pools at units 5 and 6. So I wonder how much spent fuel... Uh, Japan has in toto Arnie Gunderson. Oh, I don't know, Helen. They're, they're all old plants, and uh, you know, some like Tokai only have two units, and, and Anagawa has three. So they they vary, but I'm sure you can. There's 50 reactors, and I'm sure you can say at least 600 bundles for each reactor, perhaps more. So that's 600 tons per reactor times 50 reactors. Um, you know, it's, it's a big number. Um, uh, so 30,000 yeah. tons. Um, yeah, that's, okay. That's well, the minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum, more. Now, yeah. Yeah. Now, the beauty of Unit 4 is that there's nothing in the nuclear reactor. So the, the, as they go up, as you go to 1, 2, and 3, of course, you've got to empty the fuel pools, and that's not clear, especially Unit 3, how much damage is in the fuel pool. I think the damage in Unit 3's pool is extensive. But then you've got to get in the nuclear reactors on one, two, and three, and of course, the fuel is melted down there, so it's not as simple as grabbing the bundles and, and lifting them out. The, um, the fuel is actually, you know, melted, and there's a blob on the bottom of the reactor if you're lucky, and in fact, more likely, has leaked through the reactor, and there's a blob on the concrete. So it's, uh, um, they're going to be much more difficult than Unit 4. Well, I mean, the only time they've ever tried to remove melted fuel was at Three Mile Island, and that took them 10 years, didn't it? Um, yeah, and that, that was But that wasn't really melted like the way these three mm. have really... Right. Re that way, TMI had um, a blob of nuclear fuel on the bottom, but it hadn't breached the vessel. Uh, all of these vessels have been breached. The control rods come in at the bottom, and they're leaking like a sieve, um, so... What fuel, uh, it is likely that fuel has oozed out through the control rods. If not burned its way right out, uh, it's, it's likely Unit 2 is, has burned its way right out and is now lying on the concrete. So, um, and I think that's really the, the big change in my uh, view of the problem is, um, is what they're finding in Units 1, 2, and 3 now. Wow. The, um, you gotta, so let's think of the nuclear reactor as a pressure cooker, okay. and the nuclear reactor is in a containment, so we'll build a real strong box around the pressure cooker, mm. and then the containment is in another building called the tourist building and the reactor building, and then next to that building is the turbine building. So we've got like three or four different buildings here. We are finding in the turbine buildings, so we've got three different barriers before you ever get to the turbine building, concentrations of radioactive material on the order of a million becquerels, a million disintegrations per second in a liter. 